Okay, so let's talk about the aviatrix. So why the aviatrix was formed and why uh, it is so popular in the multi-cloud networking space. So the thing is that if you look at the data center deployments, like 20 years ago or 15 years ago, when I was actually in Cisco, the center of gra gravity was all on-prem data center. So I was helping customers design and deploy data center. And um, Cisco had a three-tier data center architecture, the access aggregation and core layer, right? And uh, everything was physical. The servers were physical, hard drives, routers, switches, obviously. And then there was a component of, of um, internet there. So obviously uh, people have started deploying applications, uh, internet facing applications, and then they had branches. But slowly people started moving towards the public cloud. And the reason was that the on-prem was slow. The on-prem could not keep up with the pace of innovation that was happening in the software area. So there were so many new technologies, there were microservices, there were, you know, databases were becoming paths and then things were moving into this cloud direction. So these DevOps guys or developers said, enough is enough, on-prem is slow, I'm gonna put my application there and then, you know, I want to basically provide business the result because business for asking uh, the agility, the nimbleness, and this is how they found the solution in the cloud. So center of gravity started moving into the cloud. And we saw that all these services were also becoming uh, popular in the cloud, like uh, people started using um, the CloudWatch, uh, they started using the security group or the VPCs and whatnot in the cloud, right? And I must say that I, what I have seen recently that after COVID-19, this shift is actually even faster because you now a lot of customers, at least I talk to, they're saying that why should I be in the business of running the on-prem data center because of the, all the challenges that are associated with it. So there are a lot of people actually moving into the cloud even faster these days. But what happened that when they went into the cloud, initially it was all good, but there were also challenges. Because remember, it's not an easy button. You just click it and then you have everything deployed in the cloud and then you know life is good. No, there are issues also in the cloud. There are challenges in the cloud. Uh, there are now concept of account, which was not present in the on-prem. There is a concept of subscription, project, and IAM and everything, right? So yeah, so as they were moving into the cloud, they uncovered challenges and they said, hmm, this is a limitation I have. Now, what about this? What about the routing protocol? I don't have OSPF. Okay, I have BGP, but that's not enough. I have the router, but I cannot even log into the, the AWS router. So how do I solve all this problem, right? So this is the same problem we also saw a lot of enterprises facing. And we said, okay, we need to solve it, right? And then these problems were mainly divided into three space. So the problems were in the build phase. So initially, when you're building the networking architecture in the cloud, uh, you face with this challenge that you go into the cloud, and the cloud will say that, okay, I'll give you the load balancer. I'll give you the security group. This is a router. And uh, you know, you go and you know, <laughs> design and deploy yourself, right? So there's a go build mantra there in the cloud. It's like walking into Ikea or uh, Walmart or Home Depot and you see, you know, shelves and then you see all the tools and everything there, but you know, yeah, that's all good. You have all the material there, but there has to be someone who can actually help you build it in a, in a way which is actually uh, 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 meets your business requirement, basically, right? So that's the important thing. So, but there was no reference architecture for, for you guys to build that. And then, okay, you build it somehow, but what about operating it? The day two operations, the troubleshooting, visibility, packet capture, uh, trace route, ping, right? All those things were missing in the cloud. So that was another challenge. And then obviously you are running the show and then your business is growing. So you you should grow it, right? Uh, according to your business needs. But that, that was another challenge because uh, what happened that applications, they started moving into different clouds. So for example, Office 365 is in uh, Azure or hosted AD now, if you are only in AWS, that's fine, 
but now you have this requirement from a business unit or from your clientele that no, I need to host my application in Azure because Amazon is my competitor. So you need to provide me this multi-cloud connectivity and it's happening a lot these days, right? So when it comes to growth, there was no reference architecture. So this is exactly what Aviatix is solving for hundreds, hundreds of customers out there. So we are building enterprises uh, or helping enterprises build these uh, networking and security solutions in the cloud. And it could be a ground field, ground, green field, sorry, green field solution or a brown field scenario. Uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, this is where Aviatrix is helping customers by providing a reference architecture called MCNA, multi-cloud network architecture. And we'll see exactly what it is. When it comes to operating in the cloud or running the operations in the cloud, we are actually defining those best practices. We are helping to cover customers to operate successfully in the cloud. We have day two operations tool that we will show you during this presentation. And it, in terms of growing, this is again where we are very strong. And the solution that we have is very simple actually. So this is another thing you will notice that the solution that we have is based on the simplicity. Because if we cannot give you these solutions in a simplest way, then there is no point of public cloud, to be honest, because the cloud is supposed to make things easy, not difficult. Otherwise, people will not move into the cloud. So this is again what we believe and the, this is how we actually solve the business problems. Okay, so let's take a look at this MCNA. So this is what we are, um, we have given to the industry that when it comes to building the cloud network, this is the reference architecture you need to follow. So the number one thing here in the middle is called cloud core. This is the core of your cloud and this is where the transit is happening. So transit networking is extremely important in the cloud because this is where your applications are connected to this is where your firewalls are connected to your load balancer. And not only that, this is also a place where your cloud access layer is connected to. So what is cloud access? Cloud is, access is basically about connecting your on-prem devices in the cloud. Because there are some customers or many customers who are 100% in the cloud, but the reality is that there, is a, there are a lot of other customers or enterprises who are moving into the cloud, but it will take them some time to be in the cloud, right? So during that time, they need connectivity to the branches, physical branches, to data centers, or some remote locations. So if you double click on this cloud core, that's what you see. You see this application layer, where you have the VPCs, VNets, VCNs in the cloud. This is, your, this is where your applications are running, and then, this is the global transit layer I was talking about. This is extremely important because if you build your transit properly, then every rest is easy. This is like in the on-prem world, you build your core networking. If it is all robust and solid, then you can easily build on top of it. You can easily grow, you can plug and play, right? So this is exactly the same concept here. So you build your transit properly and then you can add the services, you can have service chaining available and you know everything that goes with it. Cloud access is about connecting your on-prem on -prem, uh, devices into the cloud. Cloud operations, obviously, is very important because when you build it, you need to run it. The building piece could be, could be a week, could be a month, could be two months, but running the operation is a long-term journey, right? It's a long-term process. So it has to be there properly for you guys to troubleshoot and then uh, automate using Terraform or use APIs, right? So that is very important and cut across all the layers. And then the last layer is the cloud security. So without security, no architecture is, is, a, is an enterprise grade architecture. And when I say security, security doesn't mean just putting a firewall, okay? Security has a lot of aspects. So there is a component of next generation firewall there is WAF, there is ingress security, egress security, 
the the S3 buckets, for example, we'll discuss that is the storage from Amazon. Uh, you need to provide security for that, right? So those are all the aspects you need to think about when it comes to security. And the way we do it, we provide you this MCN architecture and a lot of features, but there are cases where we want to partner with the leaders in the industry because our um, mantra again is that we provide you the features that we can, but if there is already, if the problem is already solved, then we will like to partner. So basically embrace and extend. So let's say if something is provided by AWS, the load balancer, the ELB, right? There is no point for us to go into that space and build the ELB again using our technology. We will leverage that. But when you're deploying the ELB, you will notice there are some limitations. So those are the limitations we are trying to solve, right? So that's the reason we have, uh, we have partnered with a lot of partners there. So for example, Terraform for uh, network as a code for automation. Uh, we are the official Terraform provider. If you go to Hershey Corp website, and if you look under the networking space, uh, we are present there. And then we have a partnership with the security vendors, the major security vendors in the cloud, the Palo Alto, Fortinet, Checkpoint, right? And then obviously services partners like Worldwide Technologies, DXC, E plus and whatnot. 